During the Enjoy Illinois 300, reactions flared after Austin Sindrick intentionally wrecked Austin Dillon, sending him spinning into Ricky Stenhouse Jr. And for that, the team owner's Richard Childress is convinced that the incident was not an accident. So, with recent penalties dominating NASCAR talks, the question arises, will Sindrick face consequences? Join us as we dig into the stormy aftermath of this high-stakes clash, investigating requests for suspension and consequences for Sonoma Raceway. But before that, please subscribe to our channel and hit the like button for more whereabouts on NASCAR. NASCAR never ceases to provide us with thrilling drama, and this weekend was no exception. Just when we thought the intensity had simmered down after the Denny Hamlin vs. Chase Elliott feud, a new clash emerged on the tracks. This time, it was a high-stakes showdown between Austin Sindrick and Austin Dillon, resulting in a spectacular on-track beef. And guess who had some captivating thoughts to share? None other than the esteemed Richard Childress. As the Enjoy Illinois 300 race entered its final stretch with a mere 22 laps remaining, Sindrick's car collided with the back end of Dillon's, causing a chain reaction that collected Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Richard Childress, the team owner, didn't shy away from sharing his thoughts on the incident that unfolded at the Worldwide Technology Raceway. In response to a question about Kyle Busch's impact on the organization, Childress made a bold statement, suggesting that the wreck was a form of payback. Childress acknowledged Bush's contribution to the team, emphasizing his ability to win races and inspire confidence. He also highlighted how Bush had been instrumental in Austin's development as a driver. However, he didn't hesitate to mention the incident involving Austin Sindrick and the intentional wreck that ensued. Childress characterized it as a deliberate act of payback, targeting Austin's race car and derailing his progress on the track. When questioned about the wreck after securing a 13th place finish, Sindrick chose not to comment initially. However, he later admitted to Ford Performance that he had some matters to address and improve upon. The incident itself occurred during the final stage of the race, as drivers vied for strong finishes at the 1.25-mile track near St. Louis. Dillon and Stenhouse found themselves locked in a battle for 12th place on lap 219 when contact was made, resulting in their cars colliding with a wall at turn 1. Jeff Gluck of The Athletic managed to capture the car owner's candid remark, revealing Childress' conviction that Cindric's actions were far from accidental. The incident was caught on camera, allowing fans to judge for themselves whether the collision could have been a deliberate move. Upon reviewing the replay, it became evident that the incident originated from Sindrick's contact with the right rear of Dillon's car. The force caused Dillon's vehicle to spin sideways, ultimately involving Stenhouse's car as well. The two Chevrolet Camaros ended up wrecked against the outside wall, while Sindrick maneuvered to the inside and continued his forward momentum. The incident triggered a caution initially, but NASCAR eventually opted for a red flag to facilitate repairs to the damaged turn one wall. Such a consequential accident led to a red flag being raised, temporarily halting the race in an urgent attempt to repair the damaged wall. As the track fell into silence, a growing chorus of viewers voiced their belief that Sindrick's actions were deliberate. Some even called for NASCAR to suspend the driver, drawing comparisons to the recent suspension of Elliott for his right rear hook on Hamlin during the Coca-Cola 600 at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Elliott himself did not participate in the Enjoy Illinois 300, but the echoes of his suspension resonated within the racing community. It's without a doubt that NASCAR will launch an investigation into Sunday's incident. Childress, however, didn't hold back in expressing his stance. To him, it was crystal clear that Cindric's contact with Dillon was intentional, a calculated move aimed at eliminating his rival from the race. An impassioned Austin Dillon wasted no time in expressing his fury to the reporters after being knocked out of the race. He minced no words as he addressed Cindric's actions on the racetrack in St. Louis. I was wrecked intentionally by him, Dillon declared, the fire of indignation burning in his eyes. Drawing parallels to the clashes between Chase Elliott and Denny Hamlin, as well as Bubba Wallace's incident last year, Dillon left no doubt about his expectations. He proclaimed, storming off after a brief but fiery 15-second interview, Sindrick better be suspended next week. In both instances, Dylan mentioned, NASCAR responded with one race suspensions for Elliott and Wallace. Wallace's right rear hook occurred during the 2022 season, while Elliott's transgression took place just last week. With these examples in mind, the racing world wonders if another NASCAR driver will be banned for a deliberate right rear hook. And if this dangerous move keeps happening, will the governing body think about putting in place even tougher penalties to get rid of it for good? What do you think? Tell us what you think in the comments. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit that bell button for more updates. While Austin Sindrick chose not to provide any comments regarding the crash, both Austin Dillon and Richard Childress were adamant that the incident was intentional. However, there was another driver who offered their perspective on the matter following the crash. 
Ricky Stenhouse Jr., upon exiting the Cup Series race, shared his thoughts on how the turn of events impacted his performance. He expressed disappointment, as his day went from the brink of securing an 8th consecutive top 15 finish to finding himself in the infield care center. Stenhouse acknowledged the strength of their number 47, NOS Energy Drink Chevy, throughout the race and their successful efforts to maintain track position. With stage points in their grasp, he believed they had a car capable of finishing in the top 8, which was a significant improvement from the previous year. However, he couldn't hide his frustration when discussing the crash. Stenhouse revealed that it appeared as though the number 2 car, driven by Cindric, unexpectedly made contact with the right rear of Dylan's number 3 car, resulting in both Chevrolet drivers being taken out of contention. The unfortunate turn of events left Stenhouse feeling disappointed, describing it as a real bummer to have their promising streak of strong finishes interrupted in such a manner. Whether NASCAR penalizes Cindric remains to be seen. The sanctioning body will have to first decide to take a look at the incident, and then there will have to be an examination of SMT data and other applicable pieces of information. If there is a penalty, NASCAR will announce it on Tuesday or Wednesday with its weekly report. But was there anything else to Sunday's race that we didn't know about? And who was the winner that day? When it comes to Kyle Busch, calling his compliments a trend would be an understatement. With his illustrious career, he has transcended the realms of trends. Sunday's victory, his third of the season, was a resounding statement, and it marked his boldest performance yet at Richard Childers Racing. It was a truly exceptional showing by the team, displaying their utmost competence. Bush secured the pole position on Saturday, claimed victory in Stage 1, came tantalizingly close to winning Stage 2, and weathered numerous restarts in the final stretch. He fended off fierce competitors like Kyle Larson, Denny Hamlin, Ryan Blaney, and Joey Logano to emerge victorious. So what does this mean? It solidifies Bush's position among the elite contenders for the championship. With a third Cup Series title, he would join an exclusive club of only nine others who have achieved three or more championships. This group includes legends such as Richard Petty, Dale Earnhardt, Jimmy Johnson, all with seven titles, Jeff Gordon, four titles, Lee Petty, David Pearson, Cale Yarbrough, Daryl Waltrip, and Tony Stewart, each with three titles. Among this distinguished group, only three have won championships with multiple organizations. Earnhardt clinched his first title at Austerland Racing before capturing six more at RCR. Tony Stewart secured two championships with Joe Gibbs Racing before adding a third with Stewart Haas Racing. David Pearson triumphed with Cotton Owens Racing in 1966 and then clinched back-to-back -back titles with Holman Moody in 1968 and 1969. If Bush were to win the championship this season, he would be the first among them to achieve such a feat in his inaugural year with a new team. When it comes to modern drivers, Bush is often compared directly to Kevin Harvick. However, Bush currently leads Harvick with 63 wins to 60, holds a 2-1 to advantage in titles, and with Harvick retiring at the end of the season while Bush, at only 38 years old, continues to display signs of another peak in his career, the debate seems increasingly one-sided in favor of Bush. Bush positions himself in progressively high air with each new feat. His accomplishments are not fleeting or trendy. He is still etching his mark in the annals of racing glory. The upcoming decision of NASCAR in addressing the Dylan Sindrick incident and potential suspensions will undoubtedly captivate fans and industry insiders alike. The racing world eagerly awaits to see if longer suspensions will be handed down, marking a significant shift in how such actions are penalized. As the engines roar and our excitement builds, we get ready for the next exciting part of this NASCAR saga. So that's all we've got for today. We hope you enjoyed it. Tell us what you think of the video in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We hope to see you in the upcoming video.